Hey there, I'm Joshua Bardwell, and I just want to take 30 seconds of your time before we get into the video in case someone has stumbled across this video randomly and doesn't realize what the context is. This is a playlist of videos teaching you how to build a FPV, first person view freestyle or racing drone from start to finish. If you've stumbled in in the middle, Go down to the video description, there's a playlist link, start at the beginning of the playlist and work your way through. If you are working your way through this video, I want to remind you that there is a Discord server, a Discord chat server uh, for Quad Camp Online. There's a channel over there where we provide support uh, for the people who are working through this project. If you have any questions, you can ask them down in the YouTube comments, absolutely, but if you need a little bit more real-time help, you maybe will get better luck over in the Discord server. Link in the video description. I also want to remind you, thanks to Rotor Riot for helping make this project a reality. And if you are thinking of working your way through this project, you can get all of the equipment for, to build the quadcopter in just one credit card swipe from the Rotor Riot store. Yeah, you can buy the stuff elsewhere as well. One piece here, one piece there. Pay too much for shipping. Accidentally buy the wrong thing. You get it all. And there's a link to that down in the video description. On with the video. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the camera wire harness and we're gonna take the VTX wire harness and we're gonna take the red wire from both of them and we're gonna twist them together twist them together and then we're going to tin them together. And we're going to take the black wire from both of them. And we're going to do the same thing. Twist it. And tinned. So here's what we've got. We've got the camera wire harness with the yellow wire just dangling free and tinned. And we've got the video transmitter wire harness with a blue and a yellow wire. And then we've got the red and the black wires from both of them combined. We're going to start our way from the top and work down so that the wires sort of move out of the way as we go. One thing I want you to see is that this guy is probably a little longer than we need it to be. So I'm going to shorten this up to about two millimeters and I'm not going to actually snip it over the board because the little bit of metal that goes flying off can get into the board and be bad. So let's just snip this short. Now at this point, we're going to start soldering up the flight controller. It's a little confusing because the labeling it, can, it could be like, well, if this is ground, is it this one or that one? Well, it's easy when you're at the very beginning. It's easy to see that ground is this one. But it, which one of these two holes is T3? Uh, 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 yeah, so follow along carefully. And this is a place where your soldering skills may be a little bit challenged. This is some fairly fine soldering, at least if you're a novice. So if you're good at soldering, use whatever technique you, you like to make this work. But here's a technique that I think I'm going to suggest you use. What I'm going to ask you to do is, we're going to start with the, this is the B plus, here I'll point with the solder, this is the B plus pad right here, it's a little hard to read, but I'm just going to get a bit of solder, I'm going to tin that hole there, and I'm going to take, and what I want to do is I want to stick this down through, but I'm not going to be able to because the solder's in the way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in place where it would stick through and kind of flow the solder sort of from the side. So as the solder is liquid, I can push it through the hole. And then when the solder goes solid again, it'll be good and properly installed. And it should be pretty secure. And we can keep doing that. Now that was the the red wire for plus. Here's going to be the black wire for minus. Another technique you could use is to push it through and solder it from the back side, but that involves a lot of flipping over and going to the back, and it's a little bit of a, a hassle in my opinion. So I'm just going to tin this one, which is labeled ground GND. Come in flat, heat the pad, 
and get some solder on that. And see how I'm in a little trouble getting my solder to stick? It's because ground pads have a lot of thermal mass compared to the others, and sometimes need to heat them a little more to get them to stick. I'm just going to come in here, get ready to poke through the hole. I'm going to come in from the side and melt the solder, and then as the solder melts, I'm just going to stick down through the hole. Okay, ground and plus, great. We're now going to take the yellow wire from the camera header, and this the camera header is the one with this little plug here. I'll see what that's for later. We're going to take the yellow wire from the camera header, and we're going to solder that to the VI. We're going to solder that to the VI pad right here. I'm going to need to trim this to about two millimeters first. I must have missed that. And this is where you're going to want to be really careful not to burn the ribbon cable and damage it. It will make a real problem for you if you do that, so be really careful. Just like that. Then we're going to take the yellow wire from the VTX plug, that's the one that looks like this, and we're going to put that in the VO hole, which is right here below the red, below the red wire, where we put the B+. Plus. And the blue wire from the VTX plug, the blue wire is going to go to the T1 pad, which is just below the yellow VO pad, which we just soldered up. Okay. Now, having done all that, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lift this board off and flip it over and have a look at the underside and see how my joints are. One of the things you're going to want to look at is how far out your wires stick. If your wires stick way too far out, more than a couple millimeters maybe, you're going to want to trim them off uh, because you don't want them sticking underneath and getting into things and shorting things and making problems. The other thing I want to look at is much solder I've ended up with here on the underside and it might be a good idea to just add a little bit more solder here on these joints just to help make sure that there's an ample amount. You kind of want to see a little bit of penetration through to the underside. It's a little easier to add that solder after you've already done. Be very careful not to solder this chip right here. That will be bad. Maybe I should come in from this side instead of this side so my soldering iron isn't near all this stuff. So I'm going to come in from here just to touch and add a little bit of solder here to help flush this out. There we go. I can go ahead and twist these together. And if you've got a hot air gun, you can actually use the hot air gun, blow some hot air on it to help them hold their twist. This will just make this neaten up a little bit. This is the only purpose of this. They may hold their twist anyway. Silicon wire is pretty forgiving that way. Yeah, there we go. Make it look nice and neat. Okay, good. And that's going to bring us to the end of this step of the build. Check the playlist down in the video description to go to the next step. Or if you're lucky, it'll even autoplay for you. See you there.